Hello everyone, welcome to Noble Forensics. I am Saumya Gajla. Here I am explaining about hair, forensic importance of hair evidence. And I am making these videos for helping forensic students. And my main intention is to add more and more points related to one particular topic in one video only. But it is may not be possible for all topics like hair because hair is a large topic. So I made few videos about hair. And this is the part 1 of hair then here I added few basics about hair and also structure of hair in this video and before going to that what is forensic hair examination how it helps in the forensic investigation whenever hair samples are found at the crime scene then investigating officer properly collect and pack them and send to the laboratory for further analysis and along with the crime scene uh, hair samples and also suspect hair samples also collected and sent to the laboratory for further analysis like physical examination, chemical examination and microscopic examination. But what is the use of hair evidence in the forensic investigation? Uh, in the laboratory they analyze and specify whether the hair source of hair is human or animal and if it is human hair then they identify the race of human and also it is possible to identify whether hair was colored there is any cosmetic treatment and in some cases like poisoning signs of poisoning also shows up in the hair and they identify whether hair was cut hair or pulled out hair because pulled out hair contain follicle or root and it helps to determine the blood group and also DNA and this hair evidence will help as an evidence for longer time because uh, the outer layer of hair it resists to putrefaction so it can remain for longer time and also it helps as an evidence for longer time and coming to the uh, basics of hair introduction of hair trichology Trichology is study about hair and in general hair grows 0.4 mm per day and hair is a class evidence it is not an individual evidence always it is a, a class evidence and also coming to the uh, size of the hair based on the, its size it also comes under the trace evidence and hair is a common evidence in almost all crime scenes and the hair does not lost and destroyed even after other body tissues and fluids decompose even after that hair will remain useful for personal identification and forensic hair examination it is a unique field developed for criminal investigation and, and this forensic hair examination is depends on few concepts like medicine physical anthropology wildlife studies because we also study about the hair of animals so it comes under wildlife studies and cosmetic industry if there is any cosmetic treatment or dye supplied to the hair then it is comes under the cosmetic industry so this knowledge of these fields is essential for forensic examination to examine the hair evidence then coming to the structure of hair hair is uh, usually it is fibrous outgrowth which grows uh, from the papilla and it contains three parts hair is normal general parts there is three general parts which are root or follicle shaft and tip these three are the normal parts of the hair and when coming to the structure of the hair structurally it contains three main parts which are cuticle cortex and medulla cuticle is the outer layer of the hair and cortex is the middle layer of the hair and medulla is the central core part of the hair central core part of the hair is the medulla and here i also explain each of these structural parts and coming to the microscopic examination of hair cross section how it looks under the microscope this is how hair looks under the microscope see that outer layer is the cuticle and the middle central part is the medulla and remaining is the cortex and this is also same under the microscope and that cuticle is having cells which are called scales and cuticular scales these are looks like this under the microscope so there is cuticle cortex and medulla that middle portion is the medulla and coming to the cuticle this is the outer layer and it contains non-nucleator and pigment free cells which are called scales. These are cuticular scales and cuticular 
scales which are flat and translucent uh, this is a previous question in fact 2018 cuticular scales are flat and translucent and the scale thickness is 0.4 nanometer and if you observe the second diagram that cuticle scales are having sharp end and that sharp end is point towards the tip of the hair means away from the root towards the tip of the hair then about four fifths of each scale is covered by the attached scale one uh, one scale is covered with the attached scale and what are the functions of cuticle cuticle maintains structural integrity and it prevents splitting of the hair and it prevents also transfer of soluble substances from inside to outside outside to inside of the hair these are the functions of the cuticle then there is few terminology important terminology in the cuticle which are scale count scale count means number of scales per unit length that is called scale count and scale index scale index is scale length divided by overall scale diameter one scale length is divided by overall scale diameter and these two are the previous questions in ugc net and scale patterns there is different scale patterns in animals and different in humans and based on the scale patterns we can identify the origin of species whether hair is human hair or animal hair and this cuticular scales how it looks under the microscope and there is three types of cuticular scales which are flattened scales or imbricate scales crown shaped or coronal scales petal like scales or spinous scales flattened scales which are also known as imbricate scales these are usually present in the humans very 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 rarely present in the animals and crown shaped or coronal scales are present in rodents and bats but very rarely present in humans also and petal like or spinous scales which are present in cats seals minks and these petal like scales are never present in the humans three types of scales flattened crown shaped and petal like scales and flattened are commonly present in the humans and rarely present in uh, animals and crown shaped are usually present in rodents bats but rarely in humans and petal likes are present in cats seals minks but never in humans so if you focus on humans humans contain uh, flattened scales but rarely very rarely crown shaped scales but not petal shaped and there are many 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 previous questions in ugc net about cuticular scales they ask questions differently then cortex this is the major part main body of hair and this is the middle layer consists of longitudinally arranged cells without nuclei so in the cortex cells there is no nuclei so we we don't get nuclear dna but there is mitochondria we get mitochondria dna from the cortex we get nuclear dna only from the follicular tag uh, root tag of the hair and cortex cells having granules of pigment which gives color to the hair and protein keratin is present in the cortex and this keratin is with cross linking with disulfide bonds so because of this disulfide bond uh, hair is resistant to chemical and biological degradation then cortex also contain different different uh, elements in that that are spindle shaped fibrous structures nuclear remnants and pigment granules and uh, spindle shaped fibrous structures also known as macrofibrils then nuclear remnants and pigment granules these are the three elements present in the cortex and this microfibrils are made with microfibrils and nuclear remnants these are small cavities present in the cortex and pigment granules are uh, usually spherical particles smaller in size 0.2 to 0.8 micrometer in diameter and pigment granules means melanin and melanin is two types eumelanin and pheomelanin eumelanin gives brown to black color to the hair and because of pheomelanin hair will get yellow to red color these are the two types of melanin and then coming to the cortical fusi uh, this cortical fusi are small air spaces trapped in the cortex these are also known as vacuoles cortical fusi are vacuoles this is previous question you just seen it 2019 and fusi found at mostly near the root and uh, if hair contain more cortical fusi means it will having lighter the weight if contain less fusi then more weight lighter the hair means more fusi 
and melanin it gives color to the hair different melanin so you melanin and few melanin gives different colors to the hair melanin granules formed in follicles by melanocytes and melanin is usually polymer of indolquinone means indolquinone is the monomer and melanin is the polymer and it synthesized from amino acids tyrosine and dihydroxyphenylalanine to amino acids and with the action of enzyme tyrosinase so tyrosinase will produce melanin if tyrosinase activity stops then melanin production will stop so hair will lose color and hair will become gray and there is two types of melanin again eumelanin pheomelanin eumelanin gives brown to black color and pheomelanin gives yellow to red color to the hair and graying of hair means loss of tyrosinase activity that is what i said and usually beard hair turns gray first and last is the body hair body hair normally lastly turns to gray this is about the melanin then medulla medulla see how it looks under the microscope uh, medulla is uh, different in animals and different in humans usually in animals uh, there is broad medulla but coming to the humans it is different like fragmentary medulla continuous medulla discontinuous medulla and sometimes absent if you observe the th third diagram there is three hair structures first one is having fragmentary medulla and second one is there is no medulla and third one is the broad medulla the three hairs are human hairs only and medulla is the inner layer central core part of hair and medulla may or may not contain pigment size of medulla is highly variable depends on type of hair and also based on the individual usually 0 to 95 percent of the hair will contain medulla and medulla may be fragmentary discontinuous continuous and sometimes absent also then medulla difference in animals and humans uh, in animals usually medulla is broad it occupies more than half of shaft diameter and in coming to the humans it is sometimes narrow continuous fragmentary and sometimes even absent also uh, it is usually less than 1 by 3 of shaft diameter medulla is 1 by 3 of shaft diameter of hair then large amount of glycogen is found in medullary cells then there is a term important term related to hair is medullary index medullary index means medulla diameter divided by diameter of whole hair shaft i am again reading medullary index is medulla diameter divided by diameter of whole hair shaft it is different in humans and different in animals because with this medullary index we can identify whether hair is human or animal hair and usually in animals medullary index is more than 0.5 and coming to the humans it is less than 0.3 with this medullary index we can identify animal and human hair and here i discussed about uh, introduction to hair structure of hair cross section of hair structural parts of hair like cuticle cortex medulla and also other terminology melanin cortical fuse and medullary index i hope this video will definitely helps you if you feel this video is helping you you can also subscribe to noble forensics for further videos